responsibility to speak up for the Palestinians. Her event will be staged in Malmo at the same time as the Eurovision final. Nine of the 37 acts performing at the Eurovision have signed an open letter calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. But no country or performer is boycotting the event. For the world, I'm Orla Barry. I just thought that was interesting. Uh, NPR, you know, I got I to gotta listen to the enemy, uh, monitor the uh, enemy's communications now and then. So uh, I was just about in uh, Europe. I think it was like BBC or something like that broadcasting. Um, <clears throat> Eurovision, some kind of, uh, I mean, it, may, it remind me of like American Idol or something like that, but I think it's a EU wide, um, competition or, uh, musical event, basically. Um, you know, it just sounds like more nihilistic degeneracy from the sounds of it. All the stupid songs that they, uh, play it as an example. But because the war is so contested there, they had a larger police presence than ever before. And uh, I thought it was pretty interesting how the, uh, the hypocrisy some people were pointing out about how um, Russia's been banned from the event um, ever since its invasion of Ukraine. And how Israel isn't. And one of the reasons for all the uh, increased police presence, they say, was that there was a very high likelihood of some protests around, you know, the genocide in Gaza being committed by Israel. And, yeah, it's just interesting how every national flag was accepted at the event, including, of course, you know, uh, rainbow LGBTQ flag. You got to include them too as well, right guys? But the one flag that you could not fly in the event was the flag of the Palestinians. So they had some uh, performer or singer who wore some kind of a, uh, I forgot what, what it was now, but some other kind of symbol, some other item on his person to symbolize his home country because you know, we can't allow all those eyes to see the dangerous hate symbol of the Palestinian flag. Are these the kind of <clears throat> these are kind of like uh, dark age rules that we want to live in or under in this country, folks, as they do in the uh, EU? Because according to uh, <clears throat> what a lot of these lawmakers in these different countries, according to their own belief systems, different platforms like Elon's X, um, they have to abide by their rules, right? And there's all this different little power, power struggle, power play between all these little tyrants around the world trying to control the narrative, trying to control the free flow of information online right now. And it's just, it's just really telling to hear a story like that. Um, and it's not really anything different from what we're suffering from in this country, right? It's just different flavors of tyranny. It's like, <clears throat> Like I poke fun at the uh, the right sometimes. People on the right identify as being the right conservatives, often Christian, um, which is the biggest irony I could think of because true Christianity allows for the individual um, individual free thought, right? Liberty of conscience. Here I stand; I can do no other," said Martin Luther. Change the word change the world with those words and by the way the word oh man the word this just got me in a different direction uh, Russell, Ban Russell Brand recently um, he put out a video you know this is only a week in from his so called Christian conversion or baptism and uh, he's already putting out videos where he's pretty much 
foolishly attempting in my mind to undermine the authenticity of the authorized version of the Bible, King James Version, uh, by holding up an old, I mean, not old actually, it's, it's kind of interesting, the contrast, because he had this like brand new shiny King James Version, it looked like something, I don't know, he just bought at a store, maybe somebody sent to him. Obviously, it's never been opened, right? That's, that's from what I could gather. Holds up this King James or the Jacobean version or translation, as he calls it. Um, and he says, you know, is there, is there any difference between, oh, the King James and, you know, why can't we read more of a contemporary version like the, uh, the message? Anybody who's done any research, and this was a while ago, so I got to kind of brushing up on the topic before I might, you know, do like another deeper dive podcast into the topic of Bible versions, because apparently people don't have a clue, but, uh, yeah, this guy who was, uh, instrumental in making this, by the way, one of the biggest differences is King James is not, you can't copyright it, right? You can't copyright the old dusty word of God, right? But these newer versions, they can. They make money off of promoting their version of the Word of God. And so there's there's always a financial motive behind any new version of the Bible. And the biggest blunder in this in this video, you'd think, you know, as much as a researcher as uh, Russell Brand is, right, such a trusted news source, if he's going to touch upon a topic like Bible versions, you might want to do just the littlest bit of research into understanding at least what it means to be a direct translation um, of the ancient manuscripts or a paraphrase. And there's a big, big difference, guys. There's a huge difference. A direct translation, like the King James Version, based upon the best... Um, line of manuscripts most credible I mean from the research I've done in my mind the Textus Receptus is the most credible uh, lineage if you want to trace back the original you know what everybody was reading back in you know just right after Jesus' death basically the early 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 church the church fathers, they talk about the desert fathers. You gotta kinda be a little bit leery of some of those guys because some of those guys were Gnostics influenced by heretics like Simon and Magus, one of the characters that pops up in the Bible, who was trying to buy salvation. You know, turn turn the issue of salvation into a business, which you know of course the Vatican later turned into quite a profitable quite a profitable business in that even, you know, St. Peter's Cathedral was built off of, for the most part, indulgences. The uh, sale of past and future sins. Like a get-out-of-tree, get-out-of-jail-free card. I don't know what's... <clears throat> I had some little stuffy today. That's what I'm going to blame it on. I'm, I'm coming off this uh, <clears throat> freakish bird flu, whatever it was. Kind of a weird illness that overcame me one night in about an hour just overtook me and what strangely enough after eating one slice of cheese pizza that had been sitting out for about a day so you never know maybe it is that a uh, bird flu infected dairy but i i can't um so yeah here, here's russell brand week after becoming a christian supposedly Already kind of, you know, in a, making slide remarks towards the King James. Oh, even kind of poo-pooing those people that criticized him. And he did get quite a bit of backlash. Good work, everybody out there, other than myself. For his use of tarot cards the same day that he was baptized. And he claims... I thought, I thought it was listed a day after he was baptized. Anyway, he claims that that video was filmed... Oh, but that was before my baptism, guys. <clears throat> okay, why did you even post it if you don't believe in it? Uh, 
I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, he backed off the tarot card a little bit after all that criticism, after all that blowback. But at the same time, he distances himself and he kind of jokes and kids and makes it this, oh silly, I've got a cat walking around. Does that make it part of the occult? <laughs> Cats aren't evil or satanic. That was a dark age delusion uh, promulgated, by the way, from the same uh, ignorant church that you're uh, flirting with right now and that your wife actually is a member of, Roman Catholic Church. Because cats' eyes glow in the dark, that makes them little hell spawns, doesn't it? Demonic. No, it's a little different than that, than uh, actually dabbling in the occult, like you have done for a large part of your life, Russell Brand. And we all know it's anybody who's paid attention to your content over the last decade or so. So, what he does in, the, in this video, in this recent video, he kind of distanced himself from the occult because of all the criticism. But then he busts out his well worn by the way in like I said in direct con contrast to the uh, brand new crisp King James version bring, breaks out his well worn uh, message version of the Bible and he pulls out I don't know if anybody caught that but it almost looked I'm not I'm not, I'm not sure I'm just speculating it's, it's just kind of weird image of an angel it almost looks like Michael the archangel uh, it almost looked like a tarot card, but maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's just, you know, a uh, marker, place marker in his book, which he was using it for in the first place. But uh, this guy's just full of these occult symbols. You know, he's got the 33 on his wrist. He says he's got nothing to do with the Masonic Order, the Illuminati. I just like 33. Um, <clears throat> and, and as he's admitted in past videos, he's got every different god and deity and you know tattooed all over his body because this is the tradition that he comes out of is this ecumenical you know he called Jesus back in the day just another prophet right like Muhammad like anybody else he's good with Jesus he's good with everybody Krishna Buddha so this is all the baggage is what I'm saying that Russell Brand already carries with him and I don't think he really has anybody around him to instruct him to the fact that he has to destroy all those idols. He has to repent for his sin to come to Christ. You have to realize your condition, your sinful, wicked, fallen, um, pitiful condition in order to recognize your need for a savior. Right? The, the point of the Savior is to save you from your sin, not in your sin. Jesus doesn't accept sin. He destroyed Satan and sin at the cross. Now, are we still living today with the great deceiver? Still going about like the lion that he is, seeking to whom he will devour? Yes. Uh, does the church still have a role to play? Yes. And we are to follow the example of Christ, who knew no sin. Um, came down in the same fallen nature that we have, you know, yet never entertained the idea of breaking God's moral law. And this elevation change is killing me right now. Um, so yeah, um, is... Yeah, anybody who knows the uh, message version of the Bible, the guy who created it, um, he was pro-LGBTQ, basically, you know, ahead of his time, right? As a leader of a apostate harlot churches out there. All of whom, including, uh, what is it, the Methodists recently, got rid of those pesky little ideas that we should have, that we should not have. Um, transvestite, uh, lesbian, you know, anything goes, leaders from behind the pulpits officially ordained by the Methodist Church. Uh, yeah, once again, trailblazers, aren't they? They're just 
progressive as progressive can be. Um, if your idea is a progressive is to degenerate, um, to be degenerate, basically. Um, so yeah, this guy who made the message, he was pro, uh, he, he basically took out all the verses that were critical of homosexuality. I think he even got rid of the word homosexuality in his version. Um, he pushed his environmentalist views um, in the scripture. And he openly, that's what I thought was pretty ironic with uh, this video of Russell, uh, kind of distancing himself just for a short bit there again, um, away from the occult, while at the same time promoting an occult version of the Bible because, yes, even in the message, um, occult language is used. Uh, Jesus is often referred to as the master. Um, um, and even the Lord's prayer is distorted with occultic um, language. Like, as above, so below. Which you can actually read in the tarot deck. This occultic phrase... Um, and it ties into the uh, Hermes and all this different uh, occult garbage that's not really even important to learn other than just realize the source, you know, the inspiration of these people, whether it's Russell Brand or the, or the version of the Bible that he promotes that is, like I said, a paraphrase is something that anybody can just conjure up and say, this is what I think. God meant by this verse. And as long as it remotely relates to the original idea, you can still claim, yeah, it's just a paraphrase of the original Bible. It's in contemporary, more understandable language, guys. <clears throat> and so it's the spirit of harlotry. You know, either you respect the word of God as the word of God, and when it says, you know, there are curses to anybody who takes from or adds to this word. You take that pretty seriously if this is the word of God speaking, right? And how do we know that, well, for one thing, the King, of, King James Version is a far superior version or translation than, say, something like the Message. It only came out uh, was a couple decades ago, I think it was. Um, well, let's see. If you if you do a little, and I did this, I was just curious. Um, do a little Google search and ask ask the Google what version of the Bible has had more of a uh, impact on the world than any other. Wouldn't you know the King James pops right up? Wouldn't you know the King James is the most popular version of the Bible ever printed? In fact, it's one of the, by itself, one of the most printed books in the world. The Bible itself, in general, you know, is the most printed uh, book known to mankind, in the history of mankind. But uh, the King James Version in particular, I thought it was interesting. Um, it's also the most controversial version of the Bible. Um, and yes, it's even to this day, it's the most read Bible. It's the Bible that most people choose. I think it's like, it's over 50% of people around the world choose the King James. And a far distant second is the uh, non-inspired version with the, uh, wasn't it like a lesbian goddess worshiper on the panel? The NIV? Yeah, know who's a uh, Know who's meddling with uh, your word, guys. Uh, if you got a Bible or if you got a book in your hand that claims to be the Bible, do a little research into the people who put it together and then do a side-by-side -side comparison of some of the verses. Um, the, main, the main thing is you want it to be of the trunk of truth that is the received text, the textus receptus. Um, the original Greek manuscripts, you know, of the New Testament. And the King James just has so much. I mean, so that alone, the most popular, most used Bible on the planet. Um, the most 
controversial. Why would somebody like Russell Brand, right off the bat, as soon as he actually bust out a Bible, why is it in his interest to uh, kind of brush aside and belittle the most popular version of the Bible on the planet that has had more of an impact, that has influenced the world for the better, by the way? You wouldn't have the freedoms that you have, Russell Brand. You know, just. He ends every show with stay free, right? You wouldn't have the freedom to spout your mouth on social media. You know, to stand up against the, uh, the elites, the globalists, whatever you think you're doing. Uh, if not for the King James Version of, of the Word of God, right? And the Protestant Reformation. And all those truths that were revealed from the Bible, from the Word of God that had such a powerful in influence and impact on all of those giants right? in comparison to the pathetic moral um, fleas that I guess we are today in comparison. All those amazing men and women that shaped the future, that stood for what was right against these oppressive tyrants of old Europe in particular. Yes, the same powers, by the way, or still, you still have little guys like Wilson Rand supposedly kicking and screaming against, uh, like I said, you wouldn't have the uh, right to speak out and still keep your life. If it wasn't for the word of God and the Textus Receptus, you know, translated into the common tongue of you know, the, the German book with Martin Luther um, and the English translations, you know, like Tyndale. Um, and the thing I think was interesting was there were like seven purifications of translations that led up to the King James Version. And there's this verse in the Bible that goes something like, Thy word is like gold tried seven times in fire. So, you know, there's, a, there's another verse also that says, in the name of a king, there is power. So is there a deeper meaning to that verse? I'd like to think so. But uh, in any case, man, my throat is almost getting hoarse at this point. God bless again, everybody. I appreciate everybody watching. I just had some thoughts I had to get out today. Just kind of random. Just a few things bobbling around in my mind. Um, Appreciate everybody uh, for watching and listening and all the support of the years. And uh, until next time, Skywatch Nate, signing out.